Good morning. Happy day after Palm Sunday day. I don't know what that's called. Day after Palm Sunday day. Happy, happy Palm Sunday dried up Palm day. I don't know. Anyway, I got George with me this morning. He's a little upset with me this morning. George, why are you upset? Well, you didn't take me by the door. I didn't. Well, why why did you need to be by the door? So the kids could see me. Uh, what, what? Is that a problem? Yeah, you said you sent me by the door so I could wave at the kids because I remember I, I miss them. Uh, that is true. I did say that. I, I apologize. Will you forgive me? Yeah. What do you think of me? You're just a big lug. Oh, I'm a big lug. Yeah, you just got to lug me around. <laughs> okay, George, I, I, I got you. Hey, I, I, I did know that some kids were here yesterday, and I do have to apologize to you because some kids showed up to get their palm branches, and you weren't by the door, and it is my fault because, after all, you, you're just kind of stuffed, and you can't get around very much. So um, I will get George back to the door. Thank you. And, and he will be glad to be there to wave at you. There are still palm branches out there. And so, yeah, now go ahead and go to the screen there. Uh, the Casillas kids showed up yesterday, and they were they were looking forward to seeing you. And, yeah, I wanted to see them, too. You know, that one, he's a real spitfire. He don't say a whole lot, but you know what? He can kick real hard. I heard that. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I want to make sure that I stay away from Johnny. Johnny, I'll tell you. I kind of afraid of you, buddy. You're, you're you're a wicked one. So so Johnny, this is to you. Hi, and I'm sorry. And so yeah, yeah, that, that's that's pretty good. So so we 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 got you here, Johnny. We're we're he he's waving at you, Johnny, and all the other kids and Chip and Violet and and all the other kids out there. He's waving at you, going, I miss you. Yeah, I know. I, you, you miss me too. You miss me? No. Why not? Because you're always around. Around where? Well, look at you. You're getting fatter from your wife's cooking. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot there, George. Um, um, we'll see you in a minute. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'll be right back. Take a look at this photo one more time. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, George here, uh, uh, he'll be by the door. If you uh, need your palm branches and didn't get them yesterday and you would like to get palm branches, um, if you would just send me a text uh, to my cell phone, 419-204-9768, I will try to get that to you today, tomorrow. Uh, we have some left here at the front of the church. Again, my cell phone, text me, 419-204-9768. I will, I will try to get to you uh, as, as quick as I can. Uncle Bob, please do not text me. I am not driving all the way across the state of Ohio to bring you a palm branch. Go cut one out of my mother's tree or something. So we'll see you. Good to see you, Mike, and, and everyone, Jane and Robert and, and Lisa, and, and I guess my wife's on. I got, I got all these people that are waving at me, and I'm waving back at them, and and Carolyn Shoemate, and, and Bev Cook, and Drew, and Mike, and Sandra, and Larry, and LaRose, and Sherry Hansman, and, and Dean Richter, uh, Della Conradi, uh, Amy Rambach. I, I, I know I'm selling, probably saying the last name wrong, but good to have you with us, Amy. Beth Russell, um, we've got all sorts of people here, Shirley Opperman, um, all sorts of gingers out there. Uh, Dorothy Mosier from Lima, the Wells family, Shirley Offerman, uh, the Greer household, everyone in the household is waving. By the way, this is waving in sign language, so I'm waving to you. Um, Pat Offenbacher, um, if you guys got an update on Janella, please just text that to me. I'd like to know if she's home or not. Uh, she fell last week and broke both shoulders, um, so keep, keep her in prayer, Janella Hawk. Um, so we have these individuals Ned's in studio with me this morning helping me. Uh, Roland and Bev Kettler. Um, got all sorts of people here. Um, trying to mention as many of them as I can. The Creek household this morning. Jerry Fishball in Florida. Hope the fishing's good down there, Jerry. Um, so we've got uh, Josh, Rachel, Bill, and Missy, all four of them at, 
at the household there. The, um, so we got a whole bunch, whole bunch of individuals. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Again, if you want me to pick up palm, get palm branches, text me 419-204-9768. I'm going to uh, do what I can to get those around. Uh, no use of them going to waste. We bought them for, for us to remember and celebrate. Put them up in your windows and celebrate this week. So uh, grab your Bibles. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. I uh, want to look at this scripture this morning. And some things that happen in, in process this week as we get closer and closer to Monday, Thursday, etc. And so we want to look at this here this morning. Again, Matthew chapter 21. Yesterday was the triumphal entry, and Jesus came in. We celebrated the triumphal entry. Jesus riding in on the colt, the fall of a donkey, coming in and with his palm branches waving and people waving the palm branches, laying down their Ohio State shirts on the ground for, for Jesus to walk across. I mean, I mean, their cloaks. Sorry, didn't mean Ohio State shirts. Um, and some of you are like, you can walk on the Michigan one all you want, but not that high. That's sacred. You know, I, I, get, I get it. Just teasing. Laugh a little, laugh, deep breath, don't throw pillows at the TV, don't break the phone. Good morning, Ruth. Hey, tell Larry I need to talk to him. Have Larry call me. Um, so we're, we're moving right along here. Uh, not during the broadcast, though, Ruth. Let, let me get off air before Larry calls me. Okay, um, Jesus is coming to Jerusalem, Matthew 21. He does the triumphal entry. They sing Hosanna. In verses 9, the crowds were went ahead of him, and, and those that followed him shouted, uh, Good morning, Kristen. Um, Hosanna to the Son of David. We're in Matthew 21. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Not everybody knew, not everybody knew who, who this what person was. Some had heard, some had not, some had paid attention. I mean, Jesus' ministry was a three-year cycle, so a three-year period. Some theologians say this all happened in one year. Many theologians go back and look at the number of Passovers and different occasions and go, no, Jesus' ministry was three years long. And so, so we see that. Good morning, Parker. Um, and so three years, not everybody knew who this Jesus was. Not everybody had, had come in contact uh, people were coming from around the area. I mean, we're talking from Egypt and that area back. There was people from from Mesopotamia and, and, and Kadosha and all these uh, all these other cities and, and countries, Roman Empire, etc. The people, Jews that had been dispersed in other situations, that were coming back to Jerusalem. The, the Roman Empire now was in place, and travel from the Asia Minor and down around was possible and and the synagogues and things. So there was a lot of people coming, some that were outside the area of the Judean and Galilean ministry that had never heard of Jesus. And so that's why it says people are confused. Who is this? Verse 11, the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And, and they celebrated who he was, and they celebrated that. Now Jesus, in verse 13, Jesus entered the temple that day, and, and in the court, the temple courts, and drove out all those that were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers, the bent, the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said, "My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers." And what was happening was people were coming to to give their sacrifice. They were coming to give their atonement and and and, and be cleansed and ready for the celebrations and wanted to be acceptable in the temple. And so they brought their doves, their lambs, their 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 sin offerings to the temple, and they had made it maybe made made it for the the previous festivals. And so they wanted to go and and get this. They're going and they're going to get their sin offerings taken care of. And the priests were buying and selling doves and and looking. They would take these doves and they would put them in this cage and say, "Oh, these aren't good enough." And then they'd sell these doves to these people and say, "Now you can take these doves and go have your sacrifice." Then they bring this cage they had first back over here and sell it to the next person. And they were just switching doves and selling people and selling to people, etc. And so, good morning, Kim and Todd. Um, and so we have that thing, those things taking place, and that's why Jesus was so upset that they were robbing and stealing from people 
who honestly were coming to be of the sacrifice and atonement for sin. Good morning, daughter. Good morning, Nora. Um, and so we have to be aware that that was what was going on. But because Jesus did this and upper, upset the tables, uh, people came and, and they were highly upset, and the Pharisees became more upset. And Jesus knew it wasn't safe to stay in the city, and so he left and he went to Bethany. And so as you look this morning, as you look um, at verse 18 of chapter 21, when I was in seminary, one of the challenges we had was to, to write a paper about a passage we did not understand. And one of the passages I wrote about was this one here about the cursing of a fig tree. Matthew, uh, we find it in Mark as well. But Matthew 21, 18 to 22. Early in the morning, so it had been early this morning, on the day after Palm Sunday, Jesus was on his way back to the city, back to Jerusalem. He went to Bethany. He was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to him, then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. Jesus replied, tell, I tell, Truthfully I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to mountains, Go throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive what you ask for. In prayer. Now, in in Mark, it goes into a little more in depth, and it says that it wasn't the season for figs and and, and things that way. If we flip up, flip over to Mark chapter eleven, you will see that. And in, in the story, the account is a little different in Mark. And the cursing of the fig tree starts in, in verse eleven of chapter eleven. And it says the next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry, seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf. He went to find out if it had any fruit. But he, when he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. And on reaching Jerusalem, and it doesn't talk about the tree withering on the spot. However, later, as they're coming back, the, people, the, the disciples notice that the tree is withered, and some even on the next morning as they go back to Bethany and then go return the next morning, they notice it's withered, etc. So what's the point of this passage? Well, a key here is it's not the season for figs. At which point you look at Jesus and you go, Jesus, what's your problem? It's not the season for figs. Why are you looking for, a tr for fruit on a tree when it's not seasoned? It's like me walking out to the peach tree and going, well, you got leaves. Where's the fruit? It's not the season for peaches, so I'm just going to cut down the tree. Hasn't even bloomed yet to have the peaches, but I'm going to cut it down. Well, that didn't make sense to me. And so I, I went back and I went to a horticulture book. Yeah, I went to a horticulture book, not the Bible. I went to a horticulture book and looked up the life cycle of a fig tree. And what it is, is in the beginning of the year, when the leaves are budding, there's a little small, sweet, very, very sweet morsel of fruit, a small fig that is produced when the tree pushes out its leaves. So a tree that has leaves in the spring should have fruit, should have fruit, fig fruit, there that's called, it's not the season, not the main crop, but an early crop. But if it doesn't have an early crop in the spring, it won't have a fall crop. And it's a barren tree, so it's a useless tree. So the tree should be cut down and burned because it's no good. And so that's part of what Jesus is looking at here, going, hold on. You, you have the leaves showing that you have fruit, but you don't have any fruit. And so that's what we have. Are we Christians that have leaves? We show the expression of Jesus in a faith, but don't have fruit. Do you and I have the resemblance, but not the depth? Jesus, in that case, would say that we would be time for us to be cut down and and thrown into the fire. That's where we get into John chapter 15, why we need to be unnatural branches that are 
put back into the true vine and, 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 and grafted back in. You and I need to be grafted into Jesus. And that's where all this begins to tie back in. And so you and I, good morning, Rich. Good morning, Katie and family. Uh, Katie, hopefully you saw Johnny and them, got their, their them to see that. So you and I, are, are, are we living lives that we should? Is, is we say we, have, we carry the placard, Christian. We wear crosses around our, our necks. We put, put bumper stickers on that Jesus is my co-pilot, which is a completely wrong statement uh, in, in all, all we do. Um, because Jesus should be our, our, our pilot, not our co-pilot. He should be in charge, not us. So you and I, are, are, we, are we living lives that we should as Christians? This is a great week to think about that. Are, are we walking in a way that we should? And so this morning, I, I just want to take time and, and share with that with you. And remember that Jesus cleared the temple. He, he, he told them, don't be doing false Christianity. Don't be doing false worship. My house is a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. And so maybe we should be honoring that. Maybe we should watch what we buy and sell in the church and what we do. Maybe we should be paying attention to our walk with Jesus more and the selling of goods second. Maybe we should be, be seeing and, and so um, seeing that we can watch Jesus. Uh, I, I see in my scrolling things here that Janella Hawk did get home from the hospital. Let's keep them in prayer. I do want to turn to prayer. Uh, God says that my house should be a house of prayer. Let's do that. Let's do that this morning. Let's let's be a house of prayer. We have a, a great crowd this morning. Um, see, Mike Howell is on as well. She's texting saying, good morning, good morning, Mike. Um, and, and so, again, a reminder for those that tuned in late, if you didn't pick up palm branches, you want me to bring palm branches, drop off to your house. Uh, I'll leave them on. I'll, 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 I'll bring a ding and drop kind of thing. I'll ding the doorbell and run. Um, 419-204-9768. Let me know. I'll get palm branches out to you uh, today, tomorrow, and we'll get the, the, those cleaned up here from the front of the church. There we set, there'll be some set in here still um, for a while today. If you feel free, beautiful weather outside, drive up, grab, snatch, go. Glad to have that. Let's go to prayer um, and be in prayer this morning uh, for so many things. I mean, my the list on the back of the bulletin it just is, between both churches, is just, it, it's full. And I have a sheet over here that's full, and I know other names that have come in. And so let's go to prayer, and let's be praying, not only for how we need to think about Jesus, and how we need to walk with Him, and our faith needs to be that strong. And we need to be leaf-filled, faith-filled Christians, producing fruit every day. But let our fruit today begin with prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come and we think of how they are saying that in the next two weeks the death toll will rise. Heard a report this morning that 12 people every hour are passing away from the coronavirus in New York, New York State. Lord, that's 144 in 12 hours, 288 a day. Lord, that's, that's casualties. Lord, there's people across this state. There's people in our own communities. There's people being diagnosed. The rate is going up, yes. But Lord, there's so many positives. The number of people recovering, the number of, of people that are, that, are, that are not contracting it, the, the people that are staying healthy. Lord, we give praise and glory today for those that have to go out and work in this and, and have that opportunity. Lord, we pray for those that are, are trying to figure out how to do the unemployment thing, and still can't get through, and still can't get claims, and still don't know if their 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 uh, job situation is how it's going to be. Lord, we we don't know, and so Lord, we give this to you. Um, lift up uh, individuals that are battling even now uh, health issues. We think of the many that are upon our prayer list. Uh, I see one that just popped up here, uh, cousin Connie. Uh, prayers be with you as you do your treatments. And things today and, and have been. And, and, and just keep all of you in prayer during this time. For the many that are battling cancer, I mean, the list that, that I have before me, I mean, is large. Lord, I, I don't know how many, how many more people we could put on this list that are battling just one more cancer, one more thing, one more disease, one more illness. And Lord, we ask that your hand would be upon each and every one of these 
Lord, the number of people that are called and said, Pastor Ed, I'm just going stir crazy. Lord, give them your peace today. Give them your glory. Give them your help. Give them your comfort. Lord, allow them to, to dive into Scripture and see it more. Lord, the individuals that have called and said, Hey, I'm reading more of the Bible. Praise God. I give glory to that. Father, for those that have had surgeries, we ask that you be with them. I think of the many, uh, Barb Botkin, Janella, uh, the many others that have had surgeries. Lord, we ask for your hand and grace, your 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 precious blood to be upon them. Think of our shut-ins that, you know, we haven't seen as much as we want. And then now they're shut in and we're shut in. And, and Lord, maybe it help us to change who we are and, and how we walk. And, and Lord, we... We lift to you and we seek you this morning. We seek and ask you to walk with us and be with us. Father, help these individuals be with the, the many names that are on our list, the missions and missionaries, Matthew 25 ministry, etc. Lord, be with them. Be with the many ministries that are touching lives and reaching out, Samaritan's Purse, etc. Lord, for all those that are making masks and, and doing and so many things, Lord, we give this to you. Father, we ask that you would be, be with us and keep us, that you would help and guide us and direct us. Father, that, that you would help give us peace and grace and glory. Father, for families who have loved ones that have been have passed away, for individuals that are on ventilators right now and fighting for their lives throughout the state of Ohio and across this nation uh, with the COVID-19, Father, be with them. Clear those lungs. Allow the medicines and things to work and to take place, Lord. We ask this and seek you. Father, we come. We trust in you. Help us to be today in the day of prayer. Help us to look at our own lives and, and seek you. Help us to celebrate and, and look at a fig tree and ask ourselves a simple question. Are we walking with you the way we should? Have we become leafy Christians? without much fruit. Be with us and keep us. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, that passage has always challenged me. That passage about being a leafy Christian, being a, a fig tree without producing fruit. We are called to be fruit producers. Each one of us has been given a spiritual gift. And the gifts of the body, they change. We haven't been given a gift. Well, Pastor, I can't, I can't speak like you. I can't do this. I can't do that. No, but you can do things that I can't. Or is not my, my, my gifting, so to speak. And I'm going to say something that really just goes against what I just said because we often say those statements, well, it's not my gifting. The fact is you've been given every spiritual gift. Every. God gave you the whole fruit bowl. You didn't get a gift. You got Every gift. So in this time, God will use gifts you never used before to do work, to touch people, and be a blessing. Write a letter. Make a phone call. Come out of your comfort zone. Introverts, reach out. Extroverts, get back to it. This, this soulness, this, this coming in and being in quiet is good. For us extroverts to, to come back to center is also stretching. It needs to stretch introverts to reach out. We need one another. We need that connection and find those connections. And so I encourage you, be with one another. Walk with one another. Good morning, Pam and kids. Uh, walk with one another. Be with one another. Celebrate today. And so this morning, yep, George will be by the door. Palm branches will be there, and I'll be taking out if and when I get any um, messages. I do have a, a 10 o'clock appointment today with, with other churches. We're doing an online Zoom meeting with pastors that don't know how to set up any of this broadcast stuff. How did you do it? What did you do? Where did you get the equipment? What programs you use? And all that kind of stuff. And so we're going to be talking more about that with those individuals later today. Keep that in prayer that it all works and we can get as many churches online and working as possible. It's a completely new area of ministry. I, I pray it's been a blessing. I know it's completely humbling with the number of people that, that tune in and watch and people sharing, etc. 
Um, yesterday, Steve Gammon was on. Steve is a was the president of the Four Seas uh, Conservative Christian Congregational Conference denomination, which I'm ordained under. And Steve's been battling an is a health issue for the past year and a half or so. And I have tremendous respect for Steve. And Steve, Steve was on yesterday, and that just blew me away that he would tune in to an Ed Reinhardt and, and listen. So uh, I give glory today for what God's doing. I see these hearts going up. And you know what? Those hearts are for the love of God and for the love of one another. The number of people have said, Pastor Ed, the, just to see the names of who's watching. T log in. Say, say who you are. Say, hey, I'm watching. Say good morning. That's an encouragement, not to me, but, but to everybody else and seeing it, who else is there. And be able to scroll down and say, hey, look, so-and-so was there. And come back, hey, they're watching. Hey, great. And, and It's a way to check in. So let's consider this the 9 a.m. check-in. Um, I'll see you back here tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. To you, have a great day. Celebrate this sunshine. It's supposed to be warm and beautiful. Celebrate it. Remember, today, yesterday was a little cold. Today, walk out. Wave at people. We stood on the front porch and waved at people. You'd be surprised. All the people walk, driving by. Normally, they would just drive on by. They were waving. Everybody wants that contact. Everybody wants to, to see people. Everybody's looked glad to see people out of houses. It's, it, it's encouraging. So encourage one another. Wave to one another. It's the palm tree on the end of your arm. See ya. Don't leave me out. And we'll see you later. Have a great day.